<gasps> Hi, friends. You guessed it, no other than Pat McGrath's utopian dream. But first, if it's your first time here, hi. I'm Alicia, thank you so much for clicking on my video. And if you are returning, well, thank you for visiting me again. Kinky Sweat stands for my kinky hair and sweat life. I am a fitness professional who loves things, all movement and beauty. If you wanna check out what I do in between the makeups, you can head over to my Instagram. I didn't think I was gonna receive PR. I actually bought the palette yesterday and then received an alert yesterday night to say that something was being overnighted from Pat McGrath Labs. Bo, it's been photoed. And of course, I was just beyond grateful to have received that email and thankful as always to receive PR from Pat McGrath Labs. The palette is on its way, so maybe I'll do a giveaway with that one, but we have it here. It arrived this morning. Look at it, it's so beautiful. To get some things out of the way, First and foremost, timestamps will be down below, okay? I'm a huge Pat McGrath fan. You see the Divine poster behind me. You see my extensive playlist on all of her products, mostly. No, I, I think I did a video on all her eyeshadow palettes. If you wanna see a video from someone who is not as biased as me, who is not a fan, who loves her as much, I totally understand. Today we're getting into the swatches, of course, the eyeshadow palette info, in addition to a new product to Pat McGrath Labs, the Intensifies Artistry Wand. I actually am looking forward to trying this out. This looks to be like, like Maron in a stick in terms of intensifying tougher to handle pigments. We also received another fetish eye, so a huge thank you to Pat McGrath Labs for that. And we received some fun cards, Utopian Dream. And look what the palette came in, this hollow bubble wrap. I can hear the haters already. The bubble wrap is more interesting than what's in the palette. <laughs> right now, Utopian Dream is available on patmcgrathlabs.com. It might be available at Sephora. I don't know when. When I have that info, I'll let you know. Rolling onto the website now, it appears that this is not out of stock and I didn't expect it to be because the reaction was very mixed upon the release of Utopian Dream. Mothership 9 Utopian Dream retails for $125. If it's your first time in encountering a Pat McGrath Labs video. PML is a luxury brand. Her big mothership palettes are usually encased in the black lacquer packaging that is very heavy, very luxe. The shadows are made in, of course, in Italy. So we're talking premium materials here. You have an array of different textures. Why, why don't we read, okay? Experience astral projection as you transform eyes into prismatic nebulas. <laughs> With these ultra blendable, hyper wearable hues, 10 cosmically creamy pigments venture from iridescent amethyst and solar bronze to shocking pink coral. Six futuristic finishes, velvety matte, mesmerizing metallic. Six? Wow, okay, vel okay. velvety matte, metallic, luminous shimmer, mind altering, whoa, duochrome sparkle and transcendental trio chrome, yeah. Let you gleam, smolder and shape your way through a galaxy of looks. All shades are formulated with a next generation technology to ensure seamless blendability and exceptional wear on every skin tone. Well, there you go. We don't have shade descriptions here on the product page, which is cool. We'll figure it out all by ourselves. Additional specific product info, this palette weighs in at 12.9 grams or 0.45 ounces. We have a suggested shelf life of, I believe that says 18 months, so yay, like a year and a half. Again, here is the palette up close. This illustration is absolutely gorgeous. I mean, I want this headset with the angel wings, come on. I already have a video going into the expectations surrounding Utopian Dream upon people seeing it for the first time when it released. There were disappointments. There was like, oh man, I was expecting this. I was expecting that. Oh my gosh, another pink palette. Where I was saying basically that I think the inspo photos and videos leading up to the release very much align with what's in the palette. I mean, when you see all the pinks and the purples and the iridescent unicorn like shades that were dominant in those inspo photos and you see the inside palette, it's like, okay. I think people ran away with the fact when they saw holographic, iridescent, prismatic types of inspo that that somehow that was going to exist in a palette and with a global brand like Pat McGrath definitely a mothership was not going to be that out otherworldly although mother feels the shades in here are otherworldly in terms of different trio chromes and greens and and more robust purples so we get it, or I, I get it why don't we just go into the swatches and ooh, opening this for the first time 
here we have it untouched fresh from the bizox skin show nude ecstasy looks to be like a it, ooh, that's pretty. Iridescent, like opal pink shade. Kind of what is in Divine Rose 2. We're going to do comparisons. Don't you worry, okay? Secret Eden. A matte soft. That came out a lot warmer than I was expecting. This is like a rosy mauve. Look at, look at Secret Eden here. Okay, maybe it could have been. But whoa, that's, that's definitely more of a heartier rosier tone than i was expecting just from looking at the pan bronze desire one of the metallic shades oh my heavens that is absolutely gorgeous i can't even identify this shade is bronze with the sparkles in there but it almost leans like coppery rose bronze Okay, Bronze Solaris 005, one of Pat's specialized blitz shades. So these are the shades that people are not crazy about because as you see, it's like this jelly type of a texture that ideal when you wet it, I think. So it has more of a liquefied finish to it. And you see that there are chunks in here. So this is the texture that we're dealing with. But looking forward to then applying Bronze Solaris on top of the Intensify stick, I think that's really going to help this pigment adhere and look smoother on the lid and a lot more shiny. Well, we've all been waiting for the Astral Venusian Orchid. Wow. That's shiny. Here we go. Right next to Bronze Oh my gosh. That is absolutely gorgeous you know what this is this is fire opal with a lavender base i don't know if you could detect the lime in here my gosh that is i know people have seen this before especially those who dive deep into indie i get it can i just be excited thank you so much extreme plum noir second matte shade wow not as deep as extreme burgundy or extreme dusk from midnight sun we'll see how much depth we can get if you are deeper than me you probably will have to go in with black coffee as a base and then extreme plum noir on top to create a little more intensity cosmic bloom another metallic shade oh that's beautiful just deliciously smooth and the color you see there's like a slight flip in there it almost appears like it has like a lavender flip <sighs> we're almost to the trio chrome i'm so excited next up we have shockwave final of the mats that definitely looks a lot more coral than how it appears in pan or maybe you can detect that on the screen I thought this was going to be more like hot pink, but this is definitely more coral. That's a beautiful shade. And as a blush, forget it. Here we go. Blitz Sex Dream. And there you see in the mirror the flip that exists. Oh my goodness. And here on the finger, I think we're looking at like... It's like a maroon with like a deep green... It's so pretty. Oh, and just unbelievably smooth. I think this actually might be, is this a different, I have to go back to Divine Rose 2 because I think Sexual Terrestrial was a different formula and this is more of like a actual metallic. It looks wet. That's crazy. Incredibly smooth. Wow, I like that a lot. And last but not least, Astral Amethyst Moon. The last of the Blitz shades. That definitely comes out a lot more lavender than the Venetian Orchid. That is absolutely gorgeous. The shine on this and on the flip, it appears as like a deeper lavender shade. Boy, oh boy. So here we have all the swatches for Mothership 9 Hutopian dream i'm very happy with the selection i know it's not out there with the purples and the greens and people want pat to go wild but pat also has her investors and knows the majority of her consumers probably won't buy a rainbow like palette but let's just try it yes i do want to quickly open the intensifies just to get an idea 
of the texture. The Intensifies Artistry Wand retails for $32. It says here this eye artistry enhancer combines the versatility of a mixing liquid with an easy to use pen to deliver instantly amplified shadow vibrancy that lasts. <laughs> Designed as a multifunctional wand, it distills some of Pat's best kept backstage secrets into one simple step. Apply as a base or when layering shadows to improve adherence and optimize finish, the clear hydrating formula glides on to ensure smooth and even shadow application, transforming metallic shimmer and sparkling finishes into lavish lid embellishments. It's the couture makeup tool for ultimate adornment. I can't wait to start playing with this. And here is the actual wand, a little more modest in packaging, is encased in a plastic tube and you have the pat McGrath logo on here with the rest of the product info. I think this is, yes, it's a click up. So be careful that you don't click up too high as I think that also indicates you can't push it back down. We have a triangular tip and you can see that the product is clear and it just goes on smoothly. It feels like like a liquid for sure. So we're gonna get into that when rolling into the demo. This is made in Korea and has a six month suggested shelf life. So treat this like a mascara. It doesn't have a long shelf life like a powder product would or even an eye pencil would. Make sure you keep the tip clean and that you take note of when you start using it so you could adjust that timeline. With all that info out the way, I think it's time for us to start this demo. And why don't you come in a little closer? That's enough. Going in with Danessa's Color Fix Primer, as I think, you know, it's just faster to get it on. What should we go in with first? I'm gonna go backwards, have my Wayne Gloss 04 tap into the Skin Show Nude Shade, see how it looks as a highlighter. Okay, when in a pinch, you could definitely use the Skin Show Nude Shade as a little bit of pop to pop on the cheekbones. Well, that's pretty. Must try Secret Eden. I want to see how rosy this looks on the actual crease. Okay, I think this will be a surprise to many as it looks significantly cooler in the pan, but look how it's applying on the crease. I'm building up the color here so you can better see the shade beyond smooth, consistent with, with Pat's mattes that usually pack a punch like the ones in her Original Mothership palettes, those are significantly darker and intimidated a lot of users, but as she has grown her Mothership portfolio, I think she introduced a lot more mattes that were as impactful and a little easier to blend, actually. Shockwave, let's do it. Definitely using Shockwave as a blush at some point. Yeah, this is so corally. I thought this was actually, so back to what I was saying about the mattes being the creamy formula, I had thought she was gonna do that formula in the palette. Although, I mean, these are very creamy though. She did introduce that hybrid cream, cream matte formula in her quads. I had thought she was gonna do that in this palette. Nevertheless though, despite these being a powder, still beyond smooth. That's a pretty color. Let's try Plum Noir. Noir. I'm tapping that on the outer V just to see how much depth we can get. Not bad, not bad. I think it aligns with what's in the palette, but again, if you need a little more, I would set this up with some black coffee so you could build the intensity a little more, but that's not bad. I have to go in with Bronze Desire. I'm going in with my finger. These are so incredibly smooth. I like to use a finger for applying these metallic shades, but you could also use a smaller shader brush to refine the edges here under the crease. That is such a pretty shade. Even without these mattes, you could apply this all over the lid. Oh man, what do we wanna do? Do you wanna go, hmm, I think I want to definitely try the Venetian. But you know what? Taking my little brush here, picking up some of the intensifies and placing it on the inner corner where I wanna place that blitz shade. Picking that up and then stamping it right there. Oh, that's fun. It definitely allows for more stick and I think less fly away, if you will. So wherever you want the shadow to go, you just make sure you drop the intensifies there and 
Okay. That, that sh that's shiny. Bam. Some plum noir on the outer V. And why not cosmic bloom here on the majority of the lash line? So I think that's a nice pop of... It's almost like this color is really pretty. It almost appears neon. Like it's so... So shiny. I have to try Blitz Sex Dream. I'm gonna go in my finger and then use the brush to further refine. Uh-huh. So this, I feel, has more of a maroon base versus Sexter Terrestrial has more of like a pink base. And just cutting under here to clean this up. Hmm. And taking a little bit here on the outer V because this shade itself has a little bit of, of depth in terms of the color. So I don't feel like you need to go in with Plum Noir, but if you want to, you could tap a little here on the outer V, could assist Blitz Sex Dream into this transition. And then again, I'm just gonna go straight in with the wand on the inner corner here, pick up some Bronze Solaris, and then, yeah, hit it right here on the inner corner. Mm, I like that little stick. It almost has a cooling sensation because I think it's like a, a liquid in a stick form. It's fun to apply. I'm gonna stick to Blitz Extreme under the lash line. I'm just gonna keep it very simple for this. I'm gonna keep it very simple for this first round. You know, we're gonna get crazy in the second round. A little bit of skin show here on the brow bone and I have to see Secret Eden on the cheeks because since this is a lot more rosy than cool that's very pretty remember these are artistry palettes so you don't have to exclusively just use these shades on the eyes you could also use them on the face shockwave of course oh yeah this okay this definitely packs a punch so go in very lightly, y'all. Yeah? All right, I'm gonna apply some lashes and I'll be right back. Lashes are on, apply a little more of the Divinal in Divine Rose 2. Here's a close up of the lid, you, you see? Do you see? Mm. And here's a wide shot of both looks from round one. I'm very happy with how the eyes turned out. And dare I say, I feel that Utopian Dream, which a lot of people thought was their ideal in-between palette, between Divine Rose 1 and Divine Rose 2. Divine Rose 1 was subtle. Divine Rose 1 with their dustier roses and lavender shades, I think optimal for the makeup user who wanted some of Pat McGrath's magic but not like tenfold. So it was a lot more subdued and then when Divine Rose 2 came along, it was a lot more punchy, it had a lot more impact with the hot pinks and the coral shades. But this, despite its impact, because we haven't gotten to like the, the dazzly dazzly stuff on the lids, I feel it's still everyday friendly with a little bit of dimension, especially with Blitz Extreme. I think you could get away with using this shade all over the lid, even without a matte, and just blend out the edges. And it'll look so beautifully smoky and maroonish in nature. I think very much fall appropriate, if I may. And Bronze Desire is like, if you love bronzes, but with the kick, it's almost like a spicy bronze. Because of the hue, I think so much fun to apply on the lid. And we went sparkly with the astral shade on the inner corner, but we're gonna get into using intensifies all over the lid, get a little more extravagant with it. I'll take this off and I'll be right back. Round two begins. I think I have a lot of plans. I don't know what to do. I'm gonna start off the look with some black coffee. Blend it out here to get a little shade. Go in with Plum Noir on top, see what we get. I think if you apply it more on the inner part of where black coffee starts to diffuse, you can get the intensity on the very outer part of the lid and more the Plum Noir shade on the majority of the lid. I'm gonna do a little bracketing action actually and take Plum Noir on the inner lid as well. Cosmic Bloom right here. Oh, that's pretty. Tapping it here under the crease. Oh, wow. Now I saw a little bit of Pat's Live where her artist took the actual stick and pulled it across the shadow itself. Now it picks up obviously 
some of the product doing that, but I'm gonna rub it on my microfiber towel. You could also use a tissue, but that really is going to amp up the shine as well as the adherence. So if you find that you need a little more stick, that's what's going to do. So that's great to know you could do the stick before you apply your metallic or after. Secret Eden here on the lower lash line intensifies on the inner corner, a little bit here on the inner. Astral Amethyst Moon right there. Oh yes. This has such a beautiful blue flip. It's hard to see on camera, but that like almost blue moon glow. I'm going to turn this off because I had the light on since it's like 1047 and it's not ideal lighting but i wanted to film now so if i put this on i just get a little brighter just so you can see that's pretty and i'm pulling it through the rest of the eye look yeah man and then going even further what we can do now is place a little more of the intensifies but right on the center of cosmic bloom take astral venusian orchid and there we go. If you had problems with the astral shades, they're too flaky, they get all over the place, the intensifies will help it stick a lot better. And now look at that amped up shine on Cosmic Bliss. Secret Eden to set this eye up because I wanna go in with Astral Moon. I would suggest a tissue or a paper towel better to wipe off the intensifies because you could get like the weird things from the towel on it, but this is just going right on the lid. It's all over. Astral Amethyst, that makes it so much more easier to get a color that's a little drier in pan to show up like it is now on the lid. Cause it's her baked formula. <laughs> that is, that is really something. I mean, man. So you do feel that there is something on your lid. Not like it's glue, but because it's grabbing the pigment, you will feel like you put something on your lid to help with that effect. I just wanted to give you a heads up because if you are sensitive to that, like if you use any glitter glue or something that helps the pigments adhere to your lid and you apply the shadow and you hold your lid regularly, I feel like there's a little bit of help there, but it's not overwhelming. Like I feel like my lid's gonna stay like that forever. I'm gonna take a little bit of that off the fish cause my fingers got a little rogue. Wow. Wow. So it doesn't look as abrupt in the gradient here. I definitely want to go in with Venetian here on the inner corner. I mean, we must. We absolutely must. I think I want to do Shockwave as the lower lash line moment because it's so purpley up top and to bring in the coral hue on the bottom. Mm. If you want, you could tap on a little Plum Noir on the outer edge if you like, but a little bit of bronze desire here right smack on the center of the lash line. Almost like I'm crying bronze desire. We didn't do anything special on this side. Mm, I think I wanna put in Blitz Extreme. I'm just gonna pull it across the lash line here. There's so many ambling, so much emergency vehicle action going on. What is happening? Putting a little more black coffee cause I wanna lift this higher. I felt like I didn't bring it up enough. That's better. I know I, 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 I went a little crazy, but I felt like it wasn't translating the way I wanted it to on camera. If you ever wanted to clean something up, you could apply a little concealer around where you needed to be sharper. And I'm taking my Sony G, saw concealer, and just tapping here so it could, you know, do that. Oh, there we go. A little bit of Secret Eden here on the inner part. Yes, reintroducing a little more of the blush or shockwave. Thought we could have a little fun and roll in with some electric bloom, but way higher, like bracketing everything. And then no other than Divine Rose highlighter to pull it all together. All right, last time, I'll be right back. We're back with some 
Dream lover. And again with the electric bloom, the divine rose highlighter. And here's a look at the eyes. This is crazy. And when the intensify sets, I don't feel it anymore. I don't feel it like when I first apply and then go in with the shadow on top. I think you'll be good with that sensation. But this right here, the, the amethyst shade. What is happening? And here with the Venusian Orchid, it's so bright. You can't even detect what the color is. But man, oh man, look at that shine. It is unbelievable and a wide shot of round two you know what you know what i'm feeling like fam i feel this is like my bronze seduction but with shades that i rather use in terms of the texture in terms of the formula because again there are two metallics in bronze seduction that i feel are tougher whereas the two metallics in here are a lot smoother they have better glide and they're just easier to deal with despite the fact that the astral shades are so punchy and so shiny like i definitely need to be in this in the right mindset for astral amethyst but i rather do this than blitz flame because the lavender and the purple i think is just so uh, for me a lot more user friendly and easier to integrate in like an everyday eye routine. This is a lot for every day, but, but not for some, depending on who you can talk to. And also the tones of the mattes just help amplify whether it's gonna be rosier in tone or bronzier in tone. And therefore you have an array of possibility in terms of how subdued you want it to look versus how amplified and impactful you want it to look, which is why I feel people think this is like the, the best marriage between Divine Rose 1 and Divine Rose 2. You can be in Divine Rose 1 moment with Secret Eden and Bronze Desire and even some Plum Noir and then amp it up and then intensify it with black coffee like I have here to get a little more smoke. But then you can be galactic about it, go in exclusively with Astral Amethyst Moon, maybe a little bit of Secret Eden on the edges or even Plum Noir or even Shockwave if you wanna go that route and be a little more shiny dazzly with it. I understand this is not the rainbow palette, the prismatic holographic Tralala, -la, we all want it to happen for Mothership 9, but I think this is a more practical approach that you have the rosier, more subtle tones in here, but then you have opportunities like with Astral Venetian and Astral Moon to just go all the way all over to the side with Astral Amethyst and Astral Venetian to just go ham with how dazzly, sparkly, and really amp up the look with these shades. Ooh, I did not do bronze. Hold on. This is like blasphemy, but ignore me. I'm gonna take off a little, a little bit that's on the lid, go in with the stick, and see what bronze Solaris does with the stick. Oh, there we go that's going to melt it together and appear a lot more opaque than if you were to just apply this on dry skin even on a prime lid look at that that is insane we got to bring in the flashlight look at that shine this intensify stick is bomb okay what was i saying i got distracted this is a hit for me i love the curation of course with pat mcgrath you can see the inspiration on her ig feed where she gets her ideas and where she's headed and then when you see the actual final product you understand where her mind was at and what she wanted you to experience as a makeup wearer. It doesn't have to be aligned with what she was thinking, but you could feel the excitement and just how she dives so deeply into different textures and colors, even sound and, and again, the graphics, whoever does her graphics on IG is just spectacular. And I think it just translates so well, not only with the shades she decides to have in her palette, the textures that are in the palette, but the experience you undergo when you use these shades and you combine them, whether on your face, on your lids, and you just have a ball in trying to figure out like, what can I do today? How can I use Astral Amethyst Moon with Bronze Solaris or with Cosmic Bloom and with Bronze Desire? I think it inspires you to think out of the box and have a lot of fun. And with the introduction of Intensifies, it now allows the user to have a lot more fun with these Astral shades that maybe they shied away 
away from because they thought they were difficult to use and a pain to apply. The stick that this provides, I think is just monumental and a life-changing <laughs> tool if I might add. Yes, I'm being dramatic. When it comes to these astral shades, especially the ones that are drier in texture, now they will just melt into the skin, leave behind a shiny opaque finish that just looks wet, okay? And now it's gonna last and not fall on your lashes like it would if it was just applied dry. This is crazy. The mattes are phenomenal, silky, blendable, easy to use. The metallics in here, especially Cosmic Bloom, Bronze Desire, and Blitz Extreme. So, like, they're just so creamy. They're just so creamy. Like, the. Ooh. I mean, look at these. I know they look similar, but I think that's the point for the person who wants these colors but wants to feel confident using them because if they were more punchier then i don't think they're gonna use them i hope this video helped if you already had ordered utopian dream well i cannot wait for you to get your hands on it stay tuned for more videos creating more looks with utopian dream as well as combining it with the other palettes i think that's a good segue now into the comparisons what do you think fam skin show nude ecstasy from utopian dream skin show rose opal from divine rose 2 Skin Show Nude from Divine Rose 1. I feel the Utopian Dream shade is like a combination of these two. Secret Eden, Utopian Dream. Naked Blush, Divine Rose 2. Veloria, Divine Rose 1. This is kind of what I was expecting from Utopian Dream, but you see it's a lot more rosy. Extreme Plum Noir, Utopian Dream. Extreme Burgundy, Divine Rose 2. Extreme Mahogany, Divine Rose 1. I think Extreme Burgundy is giving you a little more and Plum Noir is like a mixture of the two. And from the Celestial Divinity Quad, we have Life on Mars, which is the creamy matte formula. That has a lot more depth. Earthly Delight from the Divine Rose Quad. Things gonna appear a little softer. Yep, just as I suspected. And from Veristic Dixton, After Dust. More brown, I suspect. It's still very soft, like a combination between these two, but these are pretty much all the shades that are from like the Divine Rose rose-like quads and palettes. Shockwave from Utopian Dream. Naked Blush, Divine Rose 2. Rose Seduction, Divine Rose 2. Temptation, Divine Rose Quad. Rose Rebellion from Risque Rose Celestial Divinity Quad. Shockwave seems to be the most coral out of all of these and these are just more pink. Bronze Desire, Utopian Dream. Divine Dust, Divine Rose 2. Sable Bronze, Divine Rose 1. Forbidden Fruit, Divine Rose Quad. Beyond Bronze, Ritualistic Rose Quad. Twilight Bronze, from the Muristic Victim. I think this is still a unique shade from Utopian Dream out of all the bronzes that we swatched. Although, let's just try Eleganza for Fun from Divine Rose 2 and Bronze Rose from Divine Rose 2. This is a little more hardy. This is a beautiful shade, one of my most favorite. But you see, it's definitely leaning more rose as opposed to Bronze Desire. It just has a little more girth to it in terms of the color. Blitz Extreme, Utopian Dream. VR Sextraterrestrial, Divine Rose 2. Yes, I think these are different textures altogether. The one in Utopian Dream takes more of a metallic finish or metallic formula. And from Divine Rose 2, this is more of like the baked formula. Because you can see in the pan that the baked formula, they don't have a distinct pan but there is a pan for blitz extreme whereas there's none for vr sexual terrestrial astral venusian orchid with astral rose orchid from ritualistic rose ah so this appears a lot more pink in the base whereas this a lot more lavender astral amethyst moon utopian dream lavendering from the risque rose quad Ooh, those together are you kidding me rose court 005 from ritualistic rose that's like more of a plum compared to these Rose Nectar Fire from Veristic Dixon. I definitely underestimated this shade. I cannot wait to use Intensifies with all these other astral shades. The game has been changed, fam. Bronze Solar 005, Utopian Dream. Gold Lust 001 from Divine Rose 2. If I were to pick out the one problem shade from Utopian Dream, it has to be the bronze shade. Because look how smoothly that swatch from Divine Rose 2, whereas this is a lot more dry where I feel the intensifies is gonna come in clutch for Bronze Solaris. Because the way it looks on the lid now with intensifies, 
it does not translate the same way it does from a swatch. The swatch is gonna be dry, you'll just be disappointed at it, but put the intensifies on or your favorite glitter glue doesn't have to be this product that you rely on for these types of textures, you be good. Oh, my bad, I forgot Astral Pink Moon from Divine Rose 2. Yeah, these still like have a lot going on. This is the Astral Solstice with a little bit of pink opal in it. Antique Gold 002 Ritualistic Rose. Definitely a lot more antique in look and feel. I forgot to go in, yes, we're gonna go in with Fleur Fantasia now because I, I forgot to sh do this shade with Shockwave, but I don't think they're gonna be the same. This is a lot softer. So why don't we go in with Lavender Blue, Lavender Blue, that's gonna be so pretty. This is lavendering, but with Astral Amethyst, that video is gonna come first. That's the mashup, that's gonna be the first one. And Iridescent Orchid, I'm not even ready. Oh my gosh, I forgot how much I love Fleur Fantasia. That is so beautiful. With Cosmic Bloom, or even the Astral Venusian shade. Definitely the first mashup video coming, fam. That's it, it's done, decided. Quickly doing Moonlight Lies on from Vioristic Vixen with Skin Show Nude Ecstasy, A Utopian Dream. Huh, they're practically the same. I would say Nude Ecstasy, not as, Maybe more beige. I feel Moonlight Liaison has a little more, is a little more pink leaning. I think those are all the major comparisons that I could think of. I have everything out open here beside me. If I missed any, please forgive me. I'll be sure to include a swatch photo in the community board, or rather on the community board, if you will let me know in the comments. But I'm very happy with Utopian Dream. I think in terms of the consistency and the formula, with the exception of Bronze Solaris, that's definitely the, the most dry out of all the shades. And you're not gonna have much luck unless you boost it with your favorite glitter glue or if you get the intensifies definitely use that first or else you will be very disappointed or just wet it wet the brush with the product already on the bristles all the other shades especially the metallics in here i like how she relied on the metallic formula for blitz extreme because it just works very well in terms of the shine and the consistency and you can blend this out so that if you don't wanna wear another shadow with it, you could buff the edges and it won't appear as dark where a lot of uh, types of multi-chrome shadows I use from indie brands, the base is dark and I think that's inevitable. So the colors could look opaque and more impactful, but this is a lot softer. So I think you'll enjoy that a lot. And again, I'll be back here with some more mashup videos combining Utopian Dream with the other quads, especially the quads because those are the shades that I feel like can supplement Utopian Dream very well. We could also combine it with Divine Rose 1 and 2. Let me know down below. I'll see you in the comments. Would I buy this right away? Not necessarily. It's permanent. You could wait for a sale. Some of you had said you're going to wait for Christmas. And that's all good to go. This video was just to show you the palette in action, the shadows, the swatches, the demos. So you have time to decide. I don't feel this is going to sell out. I think it will end up going on sale like a lot of the shadow palettes we bought right away. And they ended up being on sale anyway. I think this will be worth the wait for you if you have it on your radar and this is going to be your first Pat McGrath palette, then you're going to thoroughly enjoy it. And for those of us who collect all the Pat McGrath palettes, I think this will be loved and, and well welcomed in the Pat McGrath mothership family. I definitely can't wait to dive into it again. I think I'm going to take this to Bay's house. I'm, I'm headed over there later and uh, yeah, I want to I want to go there with Astral Amethyst Moon just to teach class and just see how it goes. People are going to ask questions and I'm going to be like, yeah, it's, it's Pat McGrath. <laughs> with all that said, much love to you, fam. I'll see you down in the comments. And until then, that is a wrap. Thank you all so much for watching. I hope this video helped. And if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and maybe consider subscribing to my channel and until then i will see you in here again with another review tutorial mothership extravaganza monthly favorites or lunchtime chit chat take care and i will see you again soon